Hi, I'm Miriam from Fun FTC, and I'm here with Team 7393 Electra Unbolts. This team has had a very successful season so far. They've advanced all the way to the World Championship after winning the Inspire Award and having a very deep run into playoffs at the Chesapeake Championship. They have a very impressive turret mechanism on their robot, as well as a lot more, and let's learn about it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so can you start off talking about your game strategy and how you approached the game at the beginning of the season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the start of the season, we sort of noticed that the main path you'd take from the wing to the backdrop was close to a straight line. So that's when we sort of decided that if we could use six wheel drive, it would be a lot better for our robot because that gives us increased acceleration and traction. So we can also sort of control that lane of the field and even push other robots. So for our drivetrain, we have this down here. Um, it also keeps a very low center of gravity, which is pretty crucial for our turret. And it's almost impossible for our robot to tip even at full extension. Um, this is just simple belted six wheel drive. Um, it doesn't use a drop center, it just uses corner omnis and it uses belts rather than like, there's a lot of different gears and chains used typically just because the power transfer is really difficult to get, right? Um, however, we end up being able to use these timing belts which we have adjustable idlers built into the drivetrain so we can even change the ratio as we need to just get the right sort of speed and or the balance of speed and torque because one of the big downsides we've found with six wheel drive or at least something we've sort of learned to balance is that it, when you're trying to accelerate, instead of slipping on the wheels, it actually just, uh, well, your motors have to keep up with that basically. So it draws a lot more current than usual. Um, and there was also problems earlier in the season with uh, the belt tension being a little, a little bit too big. So we sort of learned to work around that and we redesigned, now it's really fast. Great, and now can you talk about what goes on your drivetrain, starting off with your intake? Uh, yep, so with the intake, uh, what we have is uh, we have these uh, three rows of spinners right here, as well as uh, these two little doodads that uh, come down and uh, act as side sweepers. And um, the intake was probably one of the things that we've had most trouble with this season. Um, yep, so you can see it uh, quickly go up and transfer. Uh, so the intake, um, uh, we had to do a lot of different testing with uh, various different tubing types, and uh, this is what we found to be most effective. Um, uh, and meanwhile, if you look at our uh, uh, or at some of our old matches, you'll notice that we have a completely different uh, bucket system because the intake just does not or did not work well with uh, what we had uh, planned for the rest of the robot. Uh, so we had to do a lot of testing and a lot of iterating, but this is what we got to now, and uh, this works for the intake. And do you have any sensors on your intake that help automate the process? Uh, yes, we do. So we have these two beam brake sensors um inside the intake that detect when the pixels uh get hit um if i put a pixel in here and a pixel in here you'll notice that uh these two lights here have now become green instead of when they were previously red and that alerts the drivers uh that the pixels are inside the intake as well as giving the controller a slight rumble which we unfortunately can't show you Great, and now I see that your intake is mounted on a turret. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so the second sort of half of the game strategy revolves around optimizing six-wheel drive because what we noticed is that it works well for every season, assuming you can count for the sort of downside springs, which is really just strafing and that sort of very precise position alignment. So in order to counteract that, we use this whole turret system. Mm -hmm. So basically, in order to account for six-wheel drive, <laughs> Um, we have this sort of omnidirectional turret system. It can full, spin a full 360 degrees and extends three and a half feet in any direction and any angle. So that's already three axes of movement that sort of allow us a lot more freedom than, than a typical approach would with just like mechanism linear slides that we were deciding on at the beginning. But then we thought this would be incredibly useful as well because 
it allows us to score over other robots. We can go to the side and we can score diagonally in pretty much any way, which is also helped by our wrist mechanism, which we can get to in a bit. But the main unique thing about this turret is that it has a different optimization hidden under the hood, um, which is the fact that it uses a differential. So it's a little hard to see, but you can see the sort of bell gear design there. And so the entire differential is designed to rotate with the turret. Um, and so it's hooked up to the extension and the pitch. So the turret is actually using two axon servos. We started with go build a five turns. However, they sort of just became too slow as the season went on. However, they did give us absolute positioning, so we didn't have to worry about homing it. Now, in order to account for that, we use this shutter sensor, we call it, which is this little disc right here. And so when that slot gets triggered, you can see the red light, which is incredibly precise and gives us the exact homing location that we need. Um, and then, yeah, our differential turret, so it, it uses both motors to either get two motors worth of power on the tilt or the extension. Um, I think it's powered right now. But. And so we can do both incredibly fast. The second part of this game strategy is something we quickly notice after our first qualifier is that despite all of this, we were still mostly limited to scoring perpendicularly. So what we developed was, well, first of all, we have this wrist that just adjusts to the 30 degree angle of the backdrop, which uses the potentiometer we have on here. So this is our compliant wrist mechanism, and it lets us score from any angle, no matter where we are in the field. Um, we went through a few iterations. The reason we have this whole snake wrist thing now um, is because it uses this little joint here, but when it's a straight line, you're actually coming to the backdrop from a weird angle compared to the rotational axis of the bearing or even just your robot. So if you have that flat, it allows it to automatically be completely horizontal. Beforehand, it would like tilt weirdly like that. Um, and so while we could still score from any angle, it wasn't as good for precise mosaics. Um, so yeah, we used that. And then do you want to talk about the dropper? Yep, so and then uh, after we have this whole complicated uh, turret mechanism, we also have our scoring mechanism itself, uh, which is this dropper here. Um, and this dropper utilizes two mini servos uh, to individually control the release of pixels. Um, and uh, as well as uh, having this funnel mechanism uh, right here that you can see. And uh, what this funnel does is uh, when transferring pixels, uh, pixels would often get uh, stuck on top of the bucket system, and we didn't want that, obviously. Uh, so we designed this funnel to make sure that pixels would always get transferred 100% of the time. And we also call this the Maryland Crab Trap because it has a unique feature that was also developed sort of out of need that with enough force, these pixels could fly out, basically. And that happened during quite a few of our matches, so we developed these little crab trap mechanisms that will lock the pixels in place. So the basic idea is that any force to fling these out would therefore also have to move these even just a little bit. But even if it goes up slightly, it can't get out and, it, and the force is automatically canceled out. And so they're trapped in there unless they escape from the bottom. Yeah, so that's really cool. So what kind of software did you use to automate this whole really complex mechanism? So the actual software behind it is uh, much more complicated than you expect because the differential that's underneath the robot actually uh, requires a lot of complex math to be able to get the correct uh, outputs. For instance, if you want the uh, slide to extend, you have to power one forward and one backward. So to be able to get the power that we actually want, it will take a little bit of math uh, and matrix algebra to be able to calculate the correct thing. Additionally, we have a auto aim feature on our turret. So the driver just has to touch a point on the touchpad of the PS4 controller, and that would basically uh, aim it automatically onto the backdrop. Yep, and so now that we understand like the basic pixel manipulation, can you talk to us a little bit about your end game tasks, including your drone and hang? Uh, yep, so our uh, uh, starting with our hang mechanism, uh, we actually use two tape measures, uh, which seem strange, uh, but they've actually ended up working really uh, well for us, as well as these hook designs. Um, uh, you can see they've got a little lip here, and what that lip does is it allows us to uh, grab onto the truss for uh, hanging in a much larger, larger radius, as uh, previously we would just fall off the truss if we didn't fully hook uh, on the climbing hooks. Um, uh, another interesting thing about our climbing mechanism is uh, right here we have these uh, powered timing belts and uh, uh, these uh, timing belts make sure that uh, the tape measure here is always fully uh, tight in a circle because uh, what we would do previously was 
uh, it would not be uh, kept tight at all, and it would all spring up and then uh, pretty much break the entire thing. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, another way to put it is that when you try to extend just from here, it's just, it doesn't actually move this for a while until you create enough force, because there's so much friction, because it's the spring just tries to extend it and expand it into just a much larger circle, basically, so it's pushing against the outsides of the drum. And so what this is broke probably about six different tape measures until we finally found our solution, which is just to make it more like an actual tape measure. Um, so to prevent it from bunching up and therefore it would basically, when the friction became too much, it would just snap the tape measure backwards and tear it and tear it like in a clean straight line. So instead we use these little powered idlers, which are the blue ones, they're printed out of TPU. And so they were calculated to spin at the same exact rate as this extends. So with those powered idlers, uh, it prevents the extension from breaking the entire thing. And then onto our drone mechanism. Uh, our drone we had a lot of problems with because uh, our drone launcher hasn't changed much throughout the season. Um, it's a, a sled or powered by a spring. Um, uh, and you can see inside there's the sled right there. Um, uh, so the main problem that we had was not the launcher but the drone design itself. And uh, what we noticed was at the Chesapeake Championship, uh, there was another team, N-1, who had gotten seven out of eight of their drones in Zone 1, and so we reached out to them asking for a mentorship, and uh, this is what uh, they helped us make, which is a windmill design, um, and what this uh, that is front heavy, so it has more weight on the front side than it does on the back, and what this will do it is it will force a spin on the drone and then cause it to come crashing down almost always in Zone 1. Today we got Zone 1, four times out of five matches that we played at the scrimmage, and zone two in the fifth. Great, well, Electron Volt, thank you so much for your time, and good luck in the rest of the season. This is a really amazing robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.